Hello and welcome to the integration training for Microsoft SCCM with ServiceNow. My name is John Anderson. I'm with Expert Services. We're going to cover in this training just an overview of the thought and the process behind the SCCM integration. And then we'll cover the two versions that ServiceNow currently offers, which are version 2 and version 3 of their SCCM plugin. First of all, let's talk a little bit about what SCCM is and why uh, the, the version 2 plugin claims that it's an SMS or a slash SCCM uh, plugin. Uh, SCCM is a product by Microsoft and um, the earlier versions of the product were called Systems Management Server which for short is SMS. So for some older systems, this will be an SMS integration as far as systems management server goes. Uh, the current name of the product is System Center Configuration Manager, hence we get the name SCCM. Uh, what SCCM does is it provides a number of uh, feature sets around uh, managing large groups of Windows computer systems. Uh, you get features such as remote control, patch management, OS deployment, um, and also hardware and software inventory. All that information is stored in a Microsoft SQL Server database and so that's that's where we'll query for our integration. This integration is a unidirectional integration meaning uh, that we consider the, um, the SCCM database as the authoritative source and we just pull data from uh, SCCM into ServiceNow. We never change data or attempt to change data in SCCM. So let's cover really quickly the differences between the two versions of the SCCM integration plugins. Uh, first of all, for version 2, um, what happens is we will query on a scheduled basis each of the SCCM uh, tables that we're interested in and transform them and place them into our CMDB. We'll coalesce on the SCCM's resource ID as we store into the CMDB so as not to get duplicate configuration items if the same item uh, shows up at a later date uh, because it was modified or whatnot. However, we do run into a few problems. with if, um, if you're using discovery in your instance and you're discovering the same configuration items that you are querying from SCCM, you'll get duplicate configuration items between those two processes because Discovery has no way to understand or read the resource ID that we're coalescing on uh, from SCCM. Uh, another drawback of version 2 is that if you remove a software package in SCCM, that relationship to the computer uh, that was removed does not get removed in the ServiceNow uh, CMDB. So once that's created, that relationship's created through the, SM, the SCCM integration, uh, it's there to stay in the CMDB and you have to manually remove that. The, the nice thing about version 2 is that it does work on it, the older versions of either SMS or SCCM depending on what you have. Now with version 3, uh, it version 3 works in the end, it, it populates the same data but it works quite differently. Uh, essentially what happens is SCCM will, on a scheduled basis, populate a flat transition table in the SQL server. And on a scheduled basis, ServiceNow will query that table to bring in computer information. Uh, we also implement some new discovery features uh, that allow discovery to, uh, to coexist with the SCCM integration so that discovery of the same CIs won't create duplicate records in your CMDB. Another positive thing is that if you remove a software package from a computer in SCCM, on our next update when we import from SCCM, that relationship with the uh, former computers will be severed. And so it, it, it'll keep your CMDB more up to date with software package relationships. Uh, the drawback, if you'd say it's a drawback of version 3, is, is it was designed for Microsoft SCCM 2007R2. So if you're using older versions of SCCM, you may want to stick with version 2. Otherwise, uh, you may have significant customization uh, to, to this plugin. So now let's review the version 2 plugin 
and show how to, how that integration works and how to set it up and, and get it working in your environment. Uh, with the SCCM version 2 uh, architecture, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, all the tables are stored in the SQL database uh, in the SCCM product. And so on a scheduled basis, we're going to import from first the computer system table. And once that import is completed, then we'll go through and import from the other tables that have relationship constraints on that first table. So once that first table gets imported, all the rest will start to import. And they're all transformed and stored in the ServiceNow CMDB. To install the SCCM version 2 plugin into your instance, you're going to need to go to the plugins page and activate that plugin for your instance. Or talk to your account representative and they can help you as well. Um, once you activate the plugin, it will create a new application inside of your instance. So let's activate the SCCM plugin. So in order to do that, we just browse for plugins. And in the plugin list, I'm just going to do a wildcard search, star SCCM. And it'll show that there's two SCCMs, uh, the version 2 and the version 3 that we talked about. I've already installed these so they show as active, but uh, in your instance it'll show as inactive. You just right click and choose to activate and uh, it'll activate that plugin into your instance. So once your plugin shows as active, let's go ahead and set it up. So to get to it, I'm going to type SMS and it'll bring up our application right here. Uh, in order to set this up, we're going to click on the setup link. And this setup page is mostly all about your, your database that you'll be connecting to. And for my example, I'm going to be connecting to uh, test MySQL database. Now, uh, granted, SCCM integrations will deal with SQL databases, but I'm, I don't have one, so I'm going to fake it out for this training. I'm going to go to my uh, own personal database, and I entered in the uh, database name and my database user ID as well as my password to get into that database. Also, I'm going to use one of my mid servers to connect to uh, the database. Uh, typically, your SCCM databases will exist behind a firewall, and so uh, you'll you'll want uh, to use a mid server to connect into there to get the to the database. Once you have these uh, set up, you can just click this test data source connections link and it will run and it will give you a status on if your settings are complete, if your tables are set up properly. If you do get some errors on some of your tables, it just means, uh, it may mean you've connected just fine, but maybe your tables aren't set up yet uh, properly in the integration, which we'll go over next. But in my case, I have them all set up correctly and I'm showing a success. So the next step that I'm going to take is to work on my scheduled import. Now, as mentioned before, we're going to, on a schedule, kick off one of our imports, one of many. But uh, all of the other imports, and they're shown down here, will only trigger after this import is complete. So really, you need to schedule just this one import. All the other imports will take care of themselves. So, uh, you know, you can schedule it to work on a day or periodically or, or whatever you want. I do recommend that you uh, choose a run as, a user to run this as, just because it's useful in maintaining this integration. If, if something goes wrong, it's nice to have a knowledge of, to see it in the logs that, that an integration user is, is performing this. Then you know the SMS or the SCCM integration uh, has a problem. So I would create a user specific to the SCCM integration and execute as that user. Of course you'll need to have the proper rights, etc. Uh, you also want to make sure this is active. It's deactivated in my instance, but you'll just want to check it to make sure it's active. And um, it'll run on the schedule, or if we want to test it, we could execute it now. We won't yet. Uh, there's some more configuration that we want to do. The next area of configuration that we'll do is on the data sources. I'll leave the page. We'll go to the data sources. Um, here at the data sources, this is where we specify what table uh, we're connecting to uh, for this transaction. So uh, the first one we're going to connect to is the computer system data table in the, uh, S in the SQL database. And so we'll want to make sure that that table name accurately reflects what the actual table name is on the SQL server uh, in your environment. 
Also, I've checked the use last run date time. Uh, this tells us that we're going to only execute on uh, records that have been created or updated in the SCCM database since our last run. And you'll just want to make sure that the, the field name uh, is correct in your SCCM database as well. And if you know, also, if you're using a non-standard uh, SQL port, uh, you can specify that in the, in the data source. Uh, most of the data source uh, information will be pre-populated from the setup screen that we filled in. It gets populated in these data sources, so you don't have to worry about a lot of configuration uh, for each of these. But you will want to go through each of your data sources just to verify your table names. Uh, etc. Notice mine does say MySQL because of our demo. Typically these will say SQL Server. Now that I have everything set up, I'm going to test my uh, import. Instead of letting it run on the schedule, I'm just going to force it to execute now. So I'm going to click the Execute Now button. Now I can go to the Progress section of our application to see how we're doing. And so far, uh, nothing has come across, but we are going through a mid-server and so it will take a few seconds for that mid-server to grab the work. Now we can see that it's grabbed the work. Uh, we can kind of just kind of refresh this page and watch the progress of that import take place. When everything is green and listed as complete, uh, then we can go verify our data. So here we see that everything is green and everything looks like a success. So let's go look at our, our data here. Uh, we can go to uh, the computers. Uh, CMDB CI items and the data that came from uh, SMS are these machine 1, 2, and 3. So if I click on machine 1 we'll also notice that this operating system information got set. Uh, a, we got a disk drive brought in from SCCM, network adapters, and also some software that was installed. Now let's say that um, our SMS has gone through an update and it's time to import uh, more data over. Okay, now let's say we've got a new update in SCCM and it's time to trigger another import. I'll do it manually for this demo, but we just execute this uh, import and we'll go back to our computers and we'll watch machine one to see if it receives any updates. Right now it just has one disk, one network adapter, and one uh, piece of software installed. We'll reload that and we can see now that we have another network adapter and we have a new piece of software, Trip Calculator, uh, installed on that computer. Now let's move into the version 3 plugin of FCCM integration. This plugin is very similar in the end result, but it's very different in how uh, that data comes into service now. Uh, first of all, that integration is going to pull from two uh, SCCM SQL database tables uh, rather than many. Uh, first it's going to pull from a flat transition table named something similar to SCCM computer info table. Once it's pulled information from there it's going to pull from the software table, the same software table that the version 2 plugin pulled from. The SQL server will periodically populate the flat table uh, that we query with ServiceNow. This is not a ServiceNow action and is not configured by ServiceNow. Rather, that must be done by one of the database administrators of the database that SCCM uses. They'll need to create this flat transition table and set it up to populate it periodically uh, with Delta information. Then on a scheduled basis, ServiceNow will query the SCCM computer info table or that flat transition table and bring it into an import set where it will be transformed into the ServiceNow CMDB with all the disk, network, operating system, BIOS, processor information. After that flat table is imported, we'll then import directly from the software package table inside of SCCM and transform it and place it into the CMDB. Here's what the version 3 application will look like inside of your instance. Uh, you'll still have, it'll look very similar to what you saw in the version 2 plugin. It has all of these are pretty much the same. It does have a new uh, list for CI identifiers. And if you click that, these are the identifiers that allow us to merge discovery and SCCM 
uh, records into the same CI rather than creating duplicates between the discovery efforts and SCCM for the same configuration item. But for setup, it's going to be the same. You're going to still use, enter your database server information, your mid server in the setup. You're going to schedule your import accordingly. Notice it will list um, probably for uh, historical reasons, it still lists the old. Uh, imports, but if you recall, we're just doing two imports now with version 3. We're doing the main import to computer info, and once that's complete, uh, the SCCM software table will be queried, and that import will take place. No other import will take place, hence these have been deactivated. The data sources, again, we list all of them for historical purposes, but computer info is the one uh, that will map to that flat file. Uh, by default, this the table name is blank. That's because the database administrator is going to create that table, and so we don't know what that table name is. So once they've created that table, we need to enter that table name here. Also, according to the wiki, we recommend that you uncheck use last run date time uh, to pull everything in. If you only get a partial pull, now that we're maintaining relationships, if you only get a partial pull, we may sever relationships that actually still exist in SCCM. So you'll want to uncheck this here. That concludes our training on the Microsoft SCCM integration with ServiceNow. If you have any questions, of course, check the wiki, do a search for SCCM, and you'll get information on both version 2 and version 3. You'll also be able to get a version comparison document on the wiki uh, by making that search term as well.